2.4 now. Um, with 2.4, we are looking at writing equations of lines. Is basically what we're looking at here. So, um, with this first item, I want to write an equation of a line that has a slope of 9 and a y-intercept of negative 3. Very simple. We have y equals mx plus b as our formula, right? y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, so I take that 9 and put it in to get a 9x. b is the y-intercept, so put in a negative 3 for the y-intercept, and I'm done. So, same idea here, y equals mx plus b, right? My slope is m, so 2, I put in there to get a 2x. 1 is the y-intercept, so I put a 1 in there to get plus 1. So I have y equals 2x plus 1, and there's your answer. Write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form, so, all right, equation of a line, it's telling me the slope. So y equals mx plus b, and they're saying the slope is negative 1. So it's y equals negative 1x plus b. So how can I find b? Well, very simple. Here's x, and here's y. So I take those and I plug them in. So what that means is negative 2 is where y was. x is negative 6. So I just need to solve for b. Well, that's like saying negative 2 equals positive 6 plus b. So I subtract 6 on both sides because it's a positive 6, and I'm trying to get b all by itself. So I get negative 8. So I know what b is now. b is negative 8. I also know what the slope is. So now when I fill this in, the slope is a negative 1, x, and the intercept is negative 8. And there is your answer to that one. So down here, same idea, y equals mx plus b. Slope is 4, so it's a 4x plus b. Right? So we have x and we have y. So y is negative 3. It's a 4. x is 5 plug that in, plus b. So it's a negative 3, that's a 20, plus b. So I subtract 20 on both sides because it's a positive 20, and I'm trying to get b all by itself. So I'm getting a negative 23 equals b. So that's my intercept. So I get y equals 4x minus 23 because that is my intercept. And there is that one. And we just did two others like that, so let's skip over that one. Here we go. Write the equation, slope intercept form, then identify the slope and the y intercept. Well, I need to get that by itself. So to get y by itself, I need to subtract a 15x to both sides. Why? Because this is a positive 15x. So I cross that out. I now have negative 3y equals negative 15x plus 7. Negative 3 times y, so I divide both sides by a negative 3. Divide everything, right? So y is now by itself. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 is 5x. 7 divided by negative 3 is negative 7 divided by 3, which means this that is your y-intercept, and this is your slope. And we just did one like that. All right, write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form that passes through this point and is perpendicular to this line. Well, first of all, we have to solve for x, and this is a positive 3, so, or solve for y. So since this is a positive 3, I'm going to subtract 3x onto both sides. And when I do that, that cancels out. So I have a negative y equals negative 3x minus 3. It's a negative 1, so I divide by a negative 1. So the negatives cancel out, so I get y equals negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. x negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. So 
Find a line perpendicular. Perpendicular means the slopes are opposite reciprocals. Well, what's the opposite reciprocal of that? Well, the opposite reciprocal is a negative is the opposite, and reciprocal means I flip it, so it's negative one-third x. Now, I don't know what b is. That's what this point's for. I take this point here, and I plug that in. This is x, and this is y. So I have a 5 over here for y. I still have a negative 1 third and a negative 4 for x. So I get 5 equals 4 over 3 plus b. So to get b by itself, since it's a positive 4 thirds, I subtract 4 thirds to both sides. So I need to do 5 minus 4 thirds. So I do 5 minus 4 thirds, and we end up with 11 over 3 as our answer. So I end up with 11 over 3 as b. So what does that mean? Since 11 over 3 was b, I know b is 11 over 3, and I know that the slope now of that line was negative 1 over 3. So here is my formula. All right, uh, write an equation of a line and slope intercept form that passes through that point and is perpendicular to this. Well, the slope is 2. It already has y by itself. If the slope is 2, opposite reciprocal would be negative. It's opposite 1 over 2x plus b. So this is your x and this is your y. So my y is 5, my x is 1. So that's a 5. Negative 1 half times 1 is negative 1 half. So in order to get b by itself, since it's a negative, I need to add a half onto both sides. So I get 5 and a half equals b, which I can rewrite as 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11, so 11 over 2 is b. So your final answer is y equals negative one half x plus eleven over two. And when I come back here I will finish with the horizontal line passing through that actually let's see here what do we have yet when I come back here actually let me just do this problem. Write an equation of a horizontal line passing through that point Horizontal lines are y equals something. y equals a number of some kind. Those are what horizontal lines look like. Since this is the x and this is the y, this right here is the y. Since it's the y, very simple, y equals 2 is the horizontal line. If I said find the vertical line for this, well, the vertical line is x's, right? Vertical line is x equals a number. So this is x and this is y, so a vertical line going through that point would be whatever it is as the x, which is 3. And I believe those are insignificant. So um, last but not least is uh, direct variation. And with direct variation, um, finding that out, that is y divided by x and we get that because it's y equals kx. So you need to find out what k is, is basically what we're saying. So to do that, to find out what your k is, you divide by x on both sides. That's how you're getting y divided by x. So we know y is negative 6, and we know x is 1 over 4. You can't solve that unless you, uh, because it's two different fractions, unless you multiply by the reciprocal which is negative 24. So we would get y equals negative 24x as our answer, y equals negative 24x. And when you do this once again, it is y divided by x. So y is negative 7, x is 14. That simplifies to negative 1 half. So when we plug that into the formula, it would just be y equals negative 1 half x as your final. And if you have any other further questions or concerns now, please let me know.